Hey everyone, Pixel here. In this video, I will be teaching you how to animate like teapot in Toon Squid. Things to know before we start. Toon Squid is only available on iPad for iPad OS 15 or later, and has a $10 price tag. Also, you need to download an asset pack from YouTube to get the assets needed for this tutorial. I will link some videos in the description below. Here is a list of all file and audio types. Where to start? First, open Toon Squid. This is where all your projects are going to be. On the top right you see a plus button. Once you click it, you will see the basic settings for your animation. Name, workflow, FPS, and ratio. For settings, I use the ratio 3840x2160 for higher video quality, 24 frames per second, and traditional workflow. When it comes to naming your project, you can do whatever you like, but for this tutorial, I will be putting the name as BFDI Test Fiery. After you finish naming your project, click Create. Now it's time for the setup. Before we start, I would like to show you a brush to help you animate. First of all, on the middle right of your screen, there is a brush icon. Once you click it, go from the brush you have selected, to Vector, then click Round Stroke. If you don't see round stroke, you can click the button at the top of the panel to create one. What this does is instead of pixel-based strokes, it uses sharp vector paths making it more high quality, and makes you able to draw outside the canvas, which is super helpful for animation. Once that is done we can start importing audio. By clicking on the arrow on the bottom right on your screen, the animation panel will pop up. On the bottom left side of your screen, there is a plus. Once you click, it will show you your audio, video, images, and layer options. Click audio. It will show you the options to import audio. Personally, most of the time I use photos for my audio but you can use files too. For this tutorial I will be using photos. Once you click photos or files, scroll down until you find your specific audio you would like to use. Once you find it, click it and it will put your audio on a layer. This is the audio I'm using. Hey Coiny, you're a penny, you're worthless! Next, it's time to import layers. Click the same plus button and click layer, it will create a new one. For a character, I recommend putting 7 layers for a character with all limbs like this show order on screen, but this can vary with contestants limbs or mouths. Also remember to name them because animation can get confusing. Name them character name, leg 1, leg 2, arm 1, arm 2, eyes, and mouth. Now we are almost done with the setup. With layers, you should always use transformed hierarchy. Transformed hierarchy is basically the bones of your animation, it helps you animate so much faster. To do this, click the three dot button on the bottom left of your screen next to the magnet icon. You will see all your layers in the animation. To do this drag your character layer onto the hierarchy. Now select your face and put it on onto the character, not the hierarchy. You will tell you did it right when the layer connected to the character layer sticks out more than the character's layer. Repeat this step for the eyes, mouth, and arms, but not the legs. The legs I usually keep it above the character layer, not connected to the body rig. The legs are what you need to skew later on, I'll get onto that later in this video. Now we are officially done with the setup, now we can start the animation process. Firstly, go to Libraries, this is where all your characters and symbols will be. Click the plus icon at the top and click Import Files. This will bring up all your files you have stored. Once you find your asset pack, click on it, and open it, it will import your assets into the library. For this guide, I will be using Fiery hence the audio. Now for the fun parts, mouth animation. Go back to Libraries and click the plus icon. There should be a button called Create Audio Clip. Once click, rename the animation clip to Mouth and Create. To create lip sync, you need these basic mouth shapes shown on screen. Usually, I have 11 to 13 frames to create the mouth due to squash and stretch. It is very important to do this step because it makes your mouth smoother. Once you complete the mouth process, we are going to make them into markers. Markers are basically frame pickers, it helps you select the mouth or frame you will like. On the first frame, click the one that is above the closed mouth layer there should be an option to select set marker. Once clicked, you should rename it to the proper mouth type by clicking the grey box you can use mouth charts to help you know what is what. 
Repeat this step for how many mouths you have. Once done, go back to scene 1 and import the mouth into the timeline. Now copy it, delete the original layer, and paste it into the your mouth layer. Now when move your character, it will also move the mouth with it. Now it's time to actually animate the mouth. On the side of your screen click the two line button, it show you the property panel. Scroll down to the very bottom and click on select from markers, it will show you all the different mouths that you have. To move them, all you need to do is select the mouth type on the markers for each frame of the animation. Tip. Phonemes are the audio that plays when you move the timeline, it will help you with the mouths. This process could take either a couple minutes or a couple hours, depending on how long your audio is and how many markers you have. Hey Coiny, you're a penny, you're worthless! Once you have all of your mouths, we need to add facial features. Adding eyes and eyebrows is important to portray emotion. To switch the eyes out for a new look, I usually use a blinking animation. Tip. Pivot points are these circles in the middle of your selected layer. Make sure you have it put to the right spot. For eyes, I usually put it at the bottom to squash and stretch the eyes out before and after the blinking animation. To animate the eyes blinking, keyframes are here to help. A keyframe is a frame that defines the starting or ending points of a change, such as a change in position, rotation, or size. For this step, you are going to use the scale keyframe to stretch and squash your eyes. Usually I put the keyframe 3 frames before the blinking starts, 2 on the blinking, and 3 to 6 after the blink. Remember to turn on free from under scaling mode on the top right of the screen. Also, remember to use easing for your animation. For easing I use cubic ease in, and back ease out, it helps with making the animation smooth and bouncy. Remember, use ease in for the start position, and ease put for the movement after the initial starting point. You can do this step rise as many times as you like. Before the arms and limbs can move, I recommend you move the character around. It makes your arms and limbs look better animated if you do the step first, you can move your character however you like, but usually I use ease in and out for the character for slight movements. For more exaggerated movements, I use the ease in and ease out tools. Now that we are done with the face, eyes, and body movements we can now get into the movement of the limbs. You basically do the same process with pivot points and keyframing. Make sure your pivot points match up to the start of the arms so they can move functionally. This won't make your animation look 1000 times better when it comes to moving your arms. For your legs, you do not have to do any of that because we are going to skew them. For this step, you could copy what I am doing, but if you're making your own animation, you could do whatever you'd like. To smear frames, help the animation look smoother and more exaggerated. So it is recommended that you use that to your advantage. Now that the arm movements are done, we can move on to skewing. Skewing helps you move your legs back and forth with the character. To skew, you need to click on the legs and go to scaling mode. You will see an option called perspective. What this does it lets you move your legs back and forth more easily. Now with keyframes, you want to move the legs with the character but the same keyframes and easing and outs. Basically, just copy or look at the frames of the character shown for the movement. Hey Coiny, you're a penny, you're worthless! Now we're done. Now you could add after effects by backgrounds and props to make your animation come to life. Hey Coiny, you're a penny, you're worthless! I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it helped you guys a lot. If some of the stuff was not clear enough, I can make a separate video talking more in depth of these topics such as transform by or time, week. mouth movements, etc. If you want to see more stuff like this, make sure to like and subscribe.